Good morning, dear friend. Good morning. Happy Friday. This is the morning version of this thing of ours, this Friday version. And we're going to return to our notion of ventilation Friday, where we get a chance to kind of talk about things in a variety of different ways with no particular adherence to a structure, no particular concern over uh, not waxing and desultory or elliptical in being free form, which is the way I always am. But I did this years ago on talk radio called Ventilation Friday. Everything and anything, anything that comes to mind, anything that pops into your head, anything that you say, you know, I want to say something here, but I'm going to start with this. I think one of the biggest scams ever, 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 one of the biggest scams is beauty, plastic surgery, estheticians, and skin treatments. This is the biggest con I've ever seen in my life. I know more people and more women who spend countless, maybe in a year, a hundred times, who knows, at least. And they look like, they look like shit. Pardon my French. I'm sorry. I, I, I just, polishing, <laughs> there, there was this old expression, polishing a turd. I mean, what are you doing? What do you think you're going to do? Seriously, if you're 68 years old, you know, go on a diet, lose weight. No, I'm not going to do that. I'm going to get skin treatment. I'm going to, I'm going to walk around with that. Have you seen that greasy look? What the hell's that about? Or the Lauren Sanchez, Jeff Bezos. Nah, what is that? She actually says it's go ahead, make my lips look like those wax. Remember when you're a kid, those wax lips. What is the matter? Who, how does this work? What a scam. I think she needs to have some type of um, remedial or some type of ophthalmological review. Is she blind? Why would somebody do this? There, There is a, I swear to God, I wish I had a show. I know this one woman. I would have her on and on the Chiron that, that she wouldn't be able to see. I would put honestly thinks she's beautiful. You cannot believe what I will show you. You will think to yourself, this woman's crazy. She might be. She looks like a, like you have no idea, spends a fortune on what? And always has this greasy look. The lips, the eyes, the, I, 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 I've never seen. So that's my first, that's where I want to start off today. Ladies and gentlemen, there, there are things that, like when I was a kid, I used to always say, why does that guy with a big panis, paniculus, the beer gut, why is he wearing like a 28 waist and he should be a 43 with his gut pouring? You remember that? Did you ever see those? A bit rednecks did a lot of times. Like in the South, you go to a feed store, they got these wranglers with this gut basically hanging off of the side. I, I just want to wonder, why do you do this? Why? We're going to be talking about that. We're going to talk about Joe Biden is cratering neurologically. Like you cannot believe Joe Biden is, I mean, cratering, cratering. Like you cannot believe. Did you hear the cannibalism jokes? Did you hear, did you see him in Wawa? We're going to explain that phenomenon if you're not from around these parts. And also the complete and total destruction of First Amendment by people who are just, how the left is has just abandoned everything. So anyway, so this is today's version. Welcome to this thing of ours. It's called, a very very simply, it's called uh, Ventilation Friday. We're going to be doing this. And before we begin, let me just say right off the bat, which is critical, I want you to know about our great friends at MyPillow.com. Now, I've been talking about this, and you might, if you've been listening to other radio, sometimes it's in a talk radio, Mike Lindell, he's very smart because he's, he's you know, um, advertising. And you'll say, uh, use a promo code for whatever the name of the show. Forget it. If you hear that, you, you call that number, but you use promo code Lionel. It's right here, mypillow.com slash Lionel, promo code Lionel. Look at the stuff he's got here. Look at this. My, they, they've got they've got this twenty five dollar extravaganza. I don't know what he's doing. He's just every day you got to check this. This is the latest one. Sandals, slides, and slippers. 
This is their biggest seller. I don't know where, uh, who who knew? Who knew? Oh, look at this. You got to use promo code Lionel. Look at this. Best bed sheet sale ever. 25 bucks. Four pack dish towel sets, 25 bucks. Men's white slide sandals. I'm telling you, they look great with the tux. Nine fifty. This guy's out of his mind. He's insane. Remember crazy, crazy Lenny or whatever his name was. In any event, mypillow.com, promo code Lionel. It's more than just a great and a wonderful uh, company. It's an American and a guy that I love because they told him basically that he has to stop showing any kind of affiliation or support of President Trump. Bed Bath & Beyond was the first one to do this. And guess what? You know where they are? Nowhere. All right, my friends, that's it. MyPillow.com, promo code Lionel. All righty. Now, let's talk about a couple of things. First, I'm going to say something to you, and you're not going to believe me, but I'm going to say it because I believe it. I'm telling you. I don't like making fun of people who are gone. I don't like people who are who are uh, senescent and who are suffering from decrepitude. It's not my thing. I don't like to make fun of people who are who are in extremis when it comes to neurological conditions. It's very, 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 very uh, scary. True story, by the way. Kind of a funny story. If there is such a thing as a funny story, my friend told me this and. He swore to it. He wasn't one to be, um, I, I believe him because of the, of the people who were verifying it. Anyway, he was afraid that his mother might be perhaps showing the initial throws, the problems of this. So he decided to take her to a neurologist or doctor or whatever it was. And she was pissed. She was big. How dare you think that? How dare you? I am fine. You know, you how, but I'll go. I'll go. But how dare you? And she was, she was, as we say in West Tampa, emping out. She was mad. So in any event, uh, they went and they, uh, she, they took her to the doctor. Um, so there was a nurse who came in and the nurse, interestingly enough, said, okay, Mrs. Whatever it is, I'm going to give you some questions and I want you to just give me the answers back. Uh, just, just give me the answers back uh, as you, as I instruct. Okay. Nothing trick. No, we're not going to trick you. Nothing to worry about. Just, uh, just if you could, please just give it up. Okay, fine. She says, so she says, now um, I'm going to give you the, I want you to give me the, the months of the year backwards. Starting with December. The months of the year backwards, starting with December. And she kind of said, ooh. And my friend looked at her like, Ma, what's wrong with that? He goes, no, 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 I'll do it. I'll do it. No, no, I'll do it. <laughs> uh, Rebmesid. Rebmovin. He didn't know what she was saying. He's looking at her like, what the hell's the matter with you? What is this, Klingon speak? What are you talking about? Reb Movin? What? The nurse said, Mrs. So-and-so, you're fine. He goes, no, 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 March. That's tough. Hakram. And she gave them months of the year backwards. Backwards. So I don't like making fun of that. Be honest. Do you ever, do you ever, um, Think that you're like losing something, and maybe you don't remember something. Do you ever do? You ever say, "Boy, I'm, I'm I can't remember names now." No, you're paying attention to it. You're paying to attend. I've got a friend whose nickname has been Whatchamacallit his whole life. He's never known anything. It's always Whatchamacallit. Yeah, my uh, my mother Whatchamacallit. Everything's Whatchamacallit. So he's never been able to remember anything. Sometimes people have this thing where they figure like they're they're being very, very attentive. And they're they're like if the doctor says, listen, if for some reason, if you notice any tenderness in your foot, call me immediately. And that's all you do is you go, does this count? Is this tenderness? Because if you're aware of something, it could be some scary stuff. I'm remembering some of this stuff that's so arcane you can't believe. But if there's maybe it's anterograde versus retrograde amnesia in any event. So I don't like necessarily doing it. Uh, Trump 
the other day, I think he kind of nodded off or something. And Lawrence O'Donnell, that pathetic, horrible. By the way, what a scam that is. Forget, forget um, the skincare stuff. Those people are making millions on MSDNC. Nobody watches this crap. Except for the people in Washington. They like that. Morning Joe. Pfft. Anyway, he was mocking. Just look at the way Trump acts in public. Look at the way he acts. Look at the way he seems. Look at the way look at his countenance. Look at the way he his uh, his speaking pattern. He comes out and he does these things. He doesn't say, oh, you're kidding me. There is a person who the right always attributes everything to. Saul Alinsky. And Saul Alinsky, I want you to read the Rules for Radicals, one of the best templates you can imagine for people who are just wanting to actually change um, opinions. Anyway, and one of the things that my friend swears Saul Alinsky said was, take whatever you're, whatever you're doing and uh, apply it to your opponent or something like that. Okay, because to these people, they live and breathe. Saul Alinsky said everything. Saul Alinsky was the greatest thing anybody's ever Saul Alinsky, okay, fine. So, make a long story, very, 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 very short. Um, he always said, attribute something to your opponent that you're doing. So what, what Lawrence O'Donnell did, somebody sent me this, was them just mocking Trump who just nodded off a little bit during his trial. Do you know how he's going to... Now, I've got some videos coming up. I hope you saw, please tell me, you saw my dissection. Please tell me you saw my review... If you will, please tell me that you saw my, um, dare I say, my my adumbration, my clinical uh, review of Mr. Biden at, let me see, this is Pops Biden's clinical decline, freaks people out, comparing him, I thought it was very funny, it's very funny, but very sad. So I'm violating my own rules here, but you know what? Screw it. This is the presidency. There's my, there's the link. Make sure you see it. I put it in the little section there for you. Now, two things. First, remember in 2017, 2017, about thereabouts, uh, was it 2017? Right. right I, I, I'm trying to find the first one. First time you heard uh, Corn Pop. Where did you hear corn pop? What, do you remember the first time you heard this? Do you remember you heard uh, corn pop? Did did you ever? Did you ever? Look at Madam Snap. You know what? You guys are great. Isn't that sweet? Isn't that sweet? Don't you love this? Don't you love the camaraderie? I appreciate that. You're very nice. Uh, corn pop, Biden. When was the first time? 2019, 2017, for the umpteenth time, corn pop is real. Uh, there really was a corn pop. 20, 2019? Yeah, 2019. Yep, had to be 2019. And I was on a show one time, and I remember telling the, um, he doesn't remember this, but I told the host, I said, Joe Biden is out of his tree. What? This was in 2019. I said, are you listening to what he's saying? He's delusional. What I said, he's delusional. What's the matter with you? Do you not do you not know what's going on? He is delusional. Joe Biden is out of his tree. He's talking about corn pop. Man, he's a bad dude. Remember that these black kids are a pool. What the hell is this guy talking about? Talking about the pomade. I said, hey man, and he starts. He's going there. I told him that, and you took that, took that switchblade with the rusty side, rubbed it up on the side of the pool. Yeah, get rid of that rust. I'll tell you something there, corn pop. Don't look at me like that. I'll get in the palm inside my pool. I'm in charge of this thing. If you're going to jump inside right now, I'll meet you outside and I get a cane. I'll put a cane inside of a, mother, of a coffee can because that's where I put the sand because to keep the keep the oxidation off the side of the blade. It's a bad dude. What is he talking about? 
this is a president. And they were like this. Marvelous. Marvelous. It's like Hillary Clinton. Remember the, remember the jerky, the, these neurological fugues that she would go through? Dear God almighty, I'm saying somebody got her a doctor. She's fine. She has Fresnel lenses, which you wear to ward off diplopia and double vision. She's fine. She's not fine. She's jerking her head like this. With that. Quit making fun of her. I'm not making fun of her. She's sick. What if she's in the middle of a grand mal seizure? Quit making fun of her. I couldn't believe it. It's like these people with the skin treatments. You look great. They live in another world. They convince themselves, no, no, this is good. This is this is great. I'm looking fantastic, and he's looking great too. So two things. First of all, did you do you know what a Wawa is? Okay. Uh, Wawa, Wawa's what? North, South Jersey and Philly, right? They love this Wawa. I think sometimes they're in different. They're moving around. There might be one in Florida. They're moving about, but they go. They love their Wawa. And Wawa, for those people from West Tampa or Ybor City, Wawa was a nickname for a bus. I have no idea why. It just was. Every Tampeño knows Wawa, what it means. And Wawa is like a 7-Eleven. It's like a, like a, like a, whatever that, that truck stop is people want to go to where they, you know, it's, it's just, they love this place. Okay, fine. So, Biden says, I'm from Scranton. He was also from Garden City. And he does, he, he, the, the, the man's, he's not a liar because he's too demented to know he's lying. So he shows up to this Wawa. This is a big one right there in Center City. Real big. Normally it's just like a, it's like a 7 Eleven. Just pull over and still the best place ever was outside of Denver. It was a gas, Philip 66 Indian family, and they sold goats. They sold Indian food. And gas. That's the one I like. That's good. In any event. So he shows up. And he is there with the governor. Excuse me. He is there with the mayor. The mayor of uh, New, the mayor of Philadelphia. Uh, this is Sherelle Parker. Who apparently is doing a very, very good job. Certainly trying to do. I'm oh, sorry, Mayor Sherelle L. Parker, Tiffany A. And your Joseph R. Biden. Make sure you get the right one. You know, which, which mayor of Philly are we talking about named Sherelle? Make sure. Oh, Sherelle L. Okay, I got it. I got it. Lyndon B. Johnson. Okay, Donald J. Trump. Sometimes it, sometimes the letters are Harry Estrom. You know Harry Estrom. You know S. There's no period after it because it, there is no, his name is S. Because he wanted to sign, he didn't have a middle name. He just put S. There's no period next to it because technically it's not an abbreviation for a name. His name is S, the letter S. And anyway. So they went there at Sixth and Chestnut in Center City. And he they call it the Genesee Quawa. It's their fancy Wawa. Okay. So he goes there, and listen, this, this is very interesting. He goes and he orders some weird stuff. Now you know what it's like. First of all, he orders an Italian hagi. That's a big word. You got to listen to Philly. Philly does this cake, hagi. They have this bagel water. They have these. You, I can hear a Philly. I, it's like Rochester upstate, but I'm telling you, Philly, I know it. Hagi. Uh, in any event, you got a hoagie with American cheese. This really threw them off. I got a what? An Italian hoagie with American cheese. Okay, and a black and white milkshake, a dozen pretzels, a dozen assorted pastries, and a wow. Two orders of mozzarella sticks, two bottles of cake, and low-fat strawberry banana yogurt is specifically labeled for its probiotic properties. Now, first of all, this is this this is what a schmuck this guy is. You think he would sit there and say, Come here, can I talk to you? Yeah. Can, you, can, can I got a real Philly guy here? Okay, I want you to order whatever it was like your friends do. Tell me what to call it. If you go to Pat's or Gino's, whatever you go, wit or without, and then you got a cheesesteak, you know, with the onion, without the onion, the cheese whiz. What, you got to know the roots. Have you have you been through the cheesesteak? I had them years ago. They're okay. They love them there. 
Pasadena, but the real cool places are elsewhere. Philly also has a tomato pie, which I like. That's just like aroma. It's a pizza with just tomato sauce. I like that. Um, you know, they, they have their things, and, and but but there's a way you say it. There's a way you order it. There's a way you... So you would think you would say, give me a real Philadelphia, as they say, give me a real Philadelphia uh, person to come in and and order it the right way. So anyway, he does it. I'm going to be doing a video breaking this down and showing you. It's really sad. I mean, he just starts pointing and he walks off and he hands him. It is so sad compared to Trump in Chick-fil-A, Chick-fil-A in Atlanta. Now, let me just tell you something. When I was eating some meat there for a while, there, I love Chick-fil-A. Oh, my father loves it. Chick-fil-A was like, I just loved it, loved it. There's just, there's something to be said for Chick-fil-A. Oh, there she is. Is she sweet or what? Madam Stamp says, so look forward to your broadcast, Lionel. Miss you during the week when I have to work, but Friday's off. Just a simple thank you for bringing joy. Oh, my God. Thank you. How about a big hand for Madam Stamp, huh? Everybody, send her some love. Send her some love. Big kisses to her. Big brasero. Hugs to you. Thank you so much for that. So anyway, so there's Trump. Now Trump comes in, and Trump is just a man of the people. Trump, Trump believes, believe it or not, he has some Secret Service guy go to a McDonald's and buy. I don't know what the hell it was. Every, I mean, he bought up a, a, a sizable quantity of it. He really should watch what he eats. But rumor has it, believe it or not, some people say he doesn't like people going in. He doesn't want people to know who this is for because. He might have a little fear, not a fear, but I think a well, a well deserved trepidation of people trying to poison him. You think there's anything wrong with that? I don't. Not at all. Not at all. Okay. Let me just put it to you that way. But he really does this. He honest to God. Forget he's meat and potatoes, nothing fancy. He like, used to like to go to the 21 Club, steak, potato. Okay, fine. Listen, people have to understand what they like. Some There's some things that people just like, and that's just the way he is. But when he walks in, did you see the looks of the black uh, counter staff at uh, Chick-fil-A in Atlanta? They were just, he's a star. And he has a general, hi, everybody. Hi. He has a star. And he signs his autographs. And by the way, he does this thing where they say, oh, he's a germaphobe. He's a, he's called a mysophobe. Mysophobe. Shakes people's hands all the time. He really knows what he is. He, my friend, I think it was in a, it was in Tampa. He was, he was at USF or something. But my friend was in a, in a contingent of law enforcement who were, you know, doing protective detail. Might have been raining. It was a real, real lousy day. And Trump gets out of the car, rain, whatever, shakes hands, no umbrella. And then I said, just thanks, everybody. He loves these people. He connects with people. I'm telling you. He connects. Some people just have it. Some people, they just have it. Uh, Mayor de Blasio one time ate uh, pizza. By the way, pizza in New York right now. I've never seen anything like. Am I right, honey? Pizza here is like on another level. I, I, it, it, I mean, if you're into pizza, you go to pizza tours. You can do pizza. Is you have no idea. And Mayor De Blasio ate with a knife and fork, and they laughed at him. But in Rome and in and in um, various uh, uh, pizza, knife and fork is absolutely okay. But he wasn't doing it because that's the cool way to do it. He was doing it the way, whatever. By the way, does anybody have any weird way to eat food? I had a friend of mine when I was this guy, I was a school, this guy, Davey. This is so interesting. He would always lean over to drink his milk. I was a kid with the straw. He had the milk. I said, Davey, is that, a, is that an angel over there? What? And I would move it. He goes, no. I said, I'm sorry, my mistake. So he would eventually lean over, not not moving it back. He, he would lean over where no, I, and I'm thinking to myself, this son of a crazy. But there's certain things we eat certain ways. 
I've had friends, we had a friend of the family when he was a kid, he food couldn't touch, could not touch. Do not touch this. This has got to be separate. Me, I'm a mixer. Mrs. Allen and I are mixers. We love to mix. Mix it up. It sounds, love it. Different people. Anyway, Trump is that way. Okay. Biden, pathetic. First of all, nobody's around him. And whoever, when, and I'm going to do this video later, make sure you, make sure you sign up. Make sure you subscribe, Lionel Nation. I'm going to break, the, can I break it down almost like a, like, like a dissectant. There's a young man in the Wawa in Philly. This is the greatest counter person. He's got to be from like central casting. He's like, thank you very much. If you're like this, and please go over here, have your ice cream. And, and he is the most officious. He, he is the greatest counter person ever. Okay. That's that. Now we get to the latest one. This is the best story. Did you hear about Trump? Trump. Biden with the cannibals. Did you hear this story? Because he's, he just goes off. He goes off into this la-la land. Off. He just, I don't know where this stuff comes from. I don't know where he channels this, but he's off and, he's off and running. He's, he's, he's taking off. And when he gets that look, they're saying, oh, shit. Oh, God, here he is. Oh, you know, torch lights on the, you know, to get, stop him. Get him. He's talking. Get him. Move, move in. Move in. Alpha, Tango, Niner. He's on the lawn. Rangers on the lawn. Ooh, oh, he's off. He's, he's gone. He's gone. Here's the latest one. You're going to love this. Oh, some really interesting stuff. Oh, I love this. I love this. Um, Joe, Joe Biden was in a, how do we say, Joe was in, uh, I think he was in Scranton. Where was he? He was in, I think he was in, I forget where he was, but he, but he's in Philly. He's, uh, I don't know where he was. But Joe Biden suggested that his uncle may have been eaten by cannibals in Papua New Guinea. Did you see this one? This is beautiful. This is during World War II. And the PNG folks, PNG as we call them, they are, as we say, West Tampa, empingado. They are pissed. Oh. Biden was talking about his uncle, Second Lieutenant Ambrose J. Finnegan Jr., while he was campaigning in Pittsburgh. By the way, Pennsylvania. I mean, we went there. Pittsburgh. There's Philly, Scranton. I mean, there's you know, wow, it's a big place, different locations. We went to one time. We went to um. Jim Thorpe, Pennsylvania. That was very interesting. In any event, we went to see uh, a uh, so went to see Roseanne. There, as a matter of fact, she was she wowed them. In any event, dear friends, he spoke about his uh, uncle, Second Lieutenant Ambrose J. Finnegan Jr. and Uncle Bosey called him Uncle Bosey. He had flown a single engine planes as reconnaissance flights during the war. And Biden said he would, he quote, he got shot down in New Guinea and added, listen to this, they never found the body because there used to be a lot of cannibals for real in that part of New Guinea. Okay. All right. Say goodbye to the PNG crowd. Now, official war records say the Finnegan was killed when a plane in which he was a passenger experienced some engine failure and crashed into the Pacific Ocean. The records do not mention cannibalism or state that the plane was shot down or anything like that. Uh, according to the uh, Pentagon's defense POW MIA accounting agency, Biden's uncle died on May 14th, 1944, while a passenger on an A-20 Havoc aircraft that departed Mo uh, Momot, Momoti Airfield in Los Negros Island bound for Nadzab Airfield in New Guinea. Quote, 
For unknown reasons, this plane was forced to ditch in the ocean off the north coast of New Guinea. Both engines failed at low altitude, and the aircraft's nose hit the water hard. Three men failed to emerge from the sinking wreck and were lost in the crash. One crew member survived and was rescued by a passing barge. An aerial search the next day found no trace of the missing aircraft or the lost crew members. Okay? It's good now. So, analysts in Papua New Guinea were shown his comments, President Trump, and they described the particular claims made by Jojo as unsubstantiated, poorly judged, uh, lunatic, pointing out that they come at a time <laughs> when the U.S. has been seeking to strengthen its ties with the PNG, with the country, and counter Chinese influence, who, of course, are making a hell of an influence. Okay, the Melanesian group, this is according to Michael Kabuni, who was a lecturer in political science at the University of Papua New Guinea. The Melanesian group of people who Papua New Guinea is part of are a very proud people. And they would find this kind of categorization very offensive. Not because someone says, oh, there used to be cannibalism in PH. No, we, we, we know that there was cannibalism, but it was a different story. But taking it out of context and applying that your uncle jumps out of the plane and somehow you think it's a good meal is unacceptable. Cannibalism, listen to this, cannibalism was practiced by some members of the community in the past in specific context, uh, such as eating a deceased relative out of respect to prevent their body from decomposing. There was context. They wouldn't just eat white men that fell from the sky, according to Mr. Kabuni. Now, the practice was not due to people lacking food. In fact, the Papua New Guinea, they were practicing agriculture for 10,000 years. Now, among the, there are 79,000 U.S. soldiers who remain unaccounted for following the Second World War. And they either were lost in Southeast Asia, to the Korean Peninsula, and Europe. Uh, what is he implying? All 79,000 men were never found, were eaten, or that's kind of out of the... And somebody says, I'm at a loss for words, said Alan Bird, the governor of the province of East Sepik, who was recently selected as the alternate prime minister. I'm at a loss for words. I don't feel offended. It's hilarious, really. I am sure that when Biden was a child, those are the things they were told. And it goes on and on, and they it paints. Now, here's something very interesting. There is something which is a very, very interesting story. Now, listen to this. And this might be a little bit of memory lane. This was from March. There's a new genetic analysis shedding light on the epidemic caused by the practice of mortuary feasting in the eastern highlands of PNG. In mid last century, in the middle, in the middle of the last, in the middle of the 20th century, the Eastern Highlands province of Papua New Guinea was gripped by a mysterious disease which left entire villages without adult women. The four, F O R E, four, four A, the four people at the center of the outbreak called it Kuru. K-U-R-U. -U. Ring a bell? The word for shivering as people lost control of their limbs, bodily functions before a tremor set in preceding death. And the tribe had been relatively isolated from the rest of the world until the 1930s. But by the height of the epidemic in the 1950s, it had attracted the attention of researchers. And they believe that after ruling out contaminants, researchers hypothesize it could be genetic until the discovery that Kuru was fed through the tradition of mortuary feast, during which they ate the bodies of their deceased relatives. This, by the way, this is from The Guardian. This is fantastic. A type of prion disease. Kuru is a progressive neurodegenerative disease caused by the a change in the shape of the body's normal prion protein. Somebody they believe... Uh, they might die, uh, eat somebody. Uh, the, the most likely explanation, 
how it spread. That at some point, one person died of, of let's say, uh, Creutzfeldt Jacob disease (CJD), and that infected tissue was consumed. Now, I only bring this up. One of the many, in I don't want to say insane, but I'll say it insane. One of the, in fact, it, it was around the time when you know Hillary was doing this, and also remember when when Hillary when when she, the night of the night of her um, how do I say this the the night of she took the nomination she did that that Angelo Bruno looked at because of the lights and the balloons and the flashing and photophobic. People were saying, aha, it's Kuru. And I'm thinking, I said, wait a minute. First of all, Hillary is not a cannibal, number one. Number two, she'd be dead. You, you, you don't have Kuru, and then, you know, you get over it. And I don't think she was around PNG, or she was a part of any kind of a mortuary feast. I mean, this is this is when it was, I, I mean, there was nothing that was, that was off the table. And all the time I'm thinking, oh, wait a minute, hold it, hold it, hold it. Yes, she is making some unique jerky, herky jerky movements. But let's not, let's, you know, remember, as they say in medical school, if you hear hoofbeats, don't think a zebra. Ladies and gentlemen, uh, Beastie Blast says, it's Valentine's Day Friday, so everything and anything goes, right? Please tell us a story about that radio phone call that goes, I'll put it outside and set it on fire. Definitely one of the best. Oh, 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 that's when I was Lud. I will do that. I will do that. But I want to finish this. But thank you very much. That was from my years of, that was a guy named Lud, an old man who called up the radio station all the time. And as I did it, I would become Lud. Lud Shuggins with his son, Junior. Anyway, um, so you've got to see <laughs> Who was it? Um Corinne Jean Pierre, she there she's thinking she did what? KJP, what is it? You're gonna have to address the thing about the cannibalism. The cannibalism. What the hell are you talking about? The cannibalism. What? The cannibalism. That's Joe. Quick story. I used to when talk radio was great. I would call up as a, as a, as a, a variety of characters. There was a show one time called Desperate and Dateless. These poor this 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 was like in the eighties or whatever. Friday night, and these old women would call up and say, "Hello, yes, I'd like to find someone who likes my tapioca, who might find my tapioca recipe enchanting and likes quilting and." And uh, um, journaling, you know, weird stuff. And I'd call up this guy named Delma from Dover, and I just said, "I'm just horny," and I was just, I was just this vile lech and these poor men. Well, uh, anyway, but the one that I really enjoyed was this character named Lud. And whenever there would be any kind of any kind of uh, uh, terrible thing, where did you do? They 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 killed a family of five. They killed a family of six. You know, the serial killers, uh, John Wayne Gacy, whatever it is. I would always uh, say, uh, you know what I'd do if I catch that guy? I wouldn't put him inside a prison or electric chair. No, sir. What I'd do is I'd take him outside. And set him on fire, and that that was my thing. That's all he wanted to do was set people on fire. Okay, a little little dangerous, but uh, nonetheless. And uh, every day, whenever there was, whenever there was any story, in fact, the host would say, "Well, I wonder if Lord's going to be well." This a uh, ninety-six year old woman was beaten with a claw hammer by a gang of thugs. I wonder if Lud is anywhere around. You know what I do if I find that guy? And people knew. Set him on fire. Well, you know what I'd do if I got a hold of... Set him on fire? I'll tell you what I'd do. I wouldn't put him in prison. Set him on fire? No, I'd take him outside and set him on fire. And he go, That's what I said. Well, I'd do that too. So one day they had this thing. It was um, 
civil civil forfeiture. What do you do when you collect uh, when you find boats and you know things of drug dealers? And they were seizing them, you know, in Florida at the time. So I'd say, you know what I'd do if I find somebody's out there, his old boat, bringing in drugs to kill our children? You know what I'd do? Set them on fire? No, no, no. I wouldn't seize the property. But I'd bring him outside, put him in a chair, and then I'd bring that boat out that he loved, that boat worth $10 million. And I'd set it on fire. Make him watch it. And it was just this whole thing. And uh, and and I think Ludd's career was, I think, I think it was a kind of a derailed when somebody was actually set on fire. And I thought, I I think we should retire this one. Because this is before Hager. Somebody would probably say, Did 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 you do anything? I did not in any way suggest that people should provide our own version of self-help. Vigilantism by setting people on fire, I believe that should only be done by the behest of a court to set them on fire. Then again, I was thinking about something because what inspired me I had a law professor. He said, You know, if we took people out there and you know who broke into houses and took them on the courthouse lawn and set them on fire, I, I, I think burglaries would go down. And I always thought to myself, You know, you know, maybe there's Maybe there's something to this. Maybe in a very strange way, there's something to this. Maybe, maybe that's it. I don't know. I'm not sure. Now, my friends, listen to me very, very, very carefully right now. There is going to come a time when you're going to say, thank you, Lionel. Thank you for letting me know about preparewithlionel.com. Thank you. Thank you for letting me know about this. Thank you for letting me know about these incredible combos, these these buckets, these ammo boxes that last 25 years with the most incredible spread, the variety, a melange, a myriad, a, 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 a pastiche, a, a mosaic. We're talking a mosaic, okay? A veritable potpourri of everything you can imagine, okay? You understand what I'm talking about? This isn't just a, you, you, you can't put this together. Well, here's the deal. A four-week emergency food supply, 50 bucks off. 16 varieties of food, up to 25-year shelf life, over 2,000 calories a day. For the love of Pete, do it for you and your family. It just makes sense, okay? Just makes sense. I don't know how to tell you that anymore, my friends, other than this to tell you what I just told you. Prepare with Lionel. Preparewithlionel.com. Go right now. Right this minute, right this minute, preparewithlionel.com. They are just, it just makes so much bloody sense. All right. You got that? Okay. Now, I got to tell you this one, and this is the, this is the one that is just Piers Morgan, because people are not sending it to me, is so out of his tree. We are losing our minds regarding what is happening regarding Israel, Gaza, and the like. Ladies and gentlemen, I want you to believe anything you want. I want you to espouse anything that you want. I want you to think anything that you want. I want you to to be anything that you want. It does not matter to me or anyone else. You just say and do and think and whatever it is, Anything you want, anything. As long as whatever you say does not incite under the Brandenburg test, incite is not directed to incite or causes immediate incitement of violence and the like. It's that simple. And you may find the term from the river to the sea to be problematic. You might find it to be anti Semitic. You might find it to be hateful, anti-Israeli, as is your right. There are others who might say, no, I don't believe that. You might find no justice, no peace, the dog whistle, the precursor to domestic terror and violence in the streets. Others may say no. As long as you say something, as long as what you're saying is words, you should be able to say it. But right now we have people, we have uh, the left, who are 
but supporting legislation is this. No, you shouldn't be able to, we're going to ban that. And everybody in lockstep, in lockstep is just, I don't know what the word is. They're just, I, I don't know what the word is. They're just signing on to this absolute lunacy. So Piers Morgan is talking the other night, and I'm thinking to myself, wait a minute. Do you do you sound exactly, exactly like people sounded during Vietnam? Remember during Vietnam when Americans were, remember every night at Walter Crockett, all these people were dying. It's like, what is this? And and they were they they were soft soaping it. And I'm listening to him and I'm saying, Piers, um, I know this may sound as a bit of a shock to you, but if you look at the way this is being fought, this battle, some people are suspecting and some people are concerned that what Iran is doing is Iran is getting rid of its old drones, sending them over, we'll get to the reason why, causing you to retaliate and it is estimated from what I read, maybe you saw the same thing, in one particular evening or one particular response, it costs four billion, B, billion dollars. Iran is sending over these UAVs, finding the, the response time, finding targeting, whatever it is. This is what they're saying. It could be all nonsense. And Israel is spending four billion dollars. How are you going to handle 200 days of this. This is this is ridiculous. This is this is not you better Piers Morgan. That was one of the most brilliant. What? That was one of the most brilliant exercises. Iran was flattened. And I'm thinking, I can't believe this guy. And somebody said, Piers. What do you think was the basis for Iran doing this? What precipitated it? Nothing precipitated. Well, okay, maybe not a justified reason in your mind, but can you think of anything that might have been? What did they say? It was the attack on the Iranian consulate or embassy in Damascus. This is a, this is a sovereign. He said, well, we all know that. There were individuals there. This was a militarized operation. This was a front. After all, there were even generals killed. You don't think there's generals at em embassies? Who do you think was at the Iranian embassy? Remember what? Remember the time when we had our Iranian embassy? At that time. And the students came in and they said, you were using this as a military operation. They had Marines going, well, the Marines were there to merely support the, yes, the protection of the, but they said, no, this is a spy operation. No, it's not. Turns out it was. And they shredded everything. So the Iranians in 79 or whatever it was, took students and had them reattach. They had hundreds and hundreds of kids go through the shredded documents and put them together. Re, that's why today they do these double cross things or they have burn bags or whatever it is. And it verified everything they were saying at the time. This, of course, was after 1953, Operation Ajax, where the CIA toppled, the, uh, toppled Mossadegh and gave you the Shah of Iran. Okay. And I can't believe Piers Morgan is just spewing this. Like, he can't be that stupid. David Cameron. Dear God, did you see David Cameron? Somebody from BBC or something said, Mr. Cameron, yes. What do you think precipitated the Iranian, the initial aggression shown? Well, I don't know. Um, I... Do you think it might have been Israel's attacking their um, embassy or consulate? Well, I, of course, Mr. Cameron, what would you do if someone attacked 
the United Kingdom's embassy someplace where we would respond forcefully. Aha! But here's the best part. I'm saying, don't worry about it. What do you mean? Don't worry about it. That's European concern. Americans don't care about this stuff. Nobody's talking about this. Nobody. You see where Elon Omar's daughter got bounced or whatever? Eh, great. Shut these people up. Because, and this is the this this is this is the move that kills me. If you say death, death to and if, if death to anything is a part of your whatever side you're on, you're going to lose. This is Ellen and I were walking the other day. We're up on the west side, and there's in front of the John Jay. College of Criminal Justice, and there's these, these Palestinians, they're listening, I'm, I'm listening, they had a palace, uh, had a, uh, it's very peaceful, and I'm listening, no death to anybody, they were just, they, they didn't even say from the river to the peace, they were just talking about free Palestine, or whatever, great, first amendment, knock yourself out, but the good news is, don't worry about it, because American voters don't care about that, Americans, they're going, yeah, yeah, yeah. You people are crazy. These are our friends. Forget it. Just and whoever looks more like Americans, that's who we want. That's why it was very, very difficult during World War II to to for Capra and these guys to build their propaganda machines against Germans and against Italians because we had Germans and Italians here. But Japanese, no problem there. Oh my God, it was it was it was, it was racist. So these are realities. Remember, I am a realist. And this is the thing that is the worst. I remember hearing Gore Vidal recently. He said, there's nothing, there's nothing worse than that. I call it the way it is. Not the way it should be. Not the way it theoretically is, but the way it is. And let me tell you something right now, as of this moment. Going back to President Trump. President Trump is looking better and better and better than you could ever imagine, my friend. Ever imagine. You hear what I'm saying? Ever imagine. This is my pen. See this little pen? Little pen down here. Part of my uh, memory. Oh, my God. I got so much stuff. And the reason why I'm so glad to see it is because people are realizing... This guy is not going to make it. Now, when Gavin Newsom comes in, or somebody, somebody's going to have to come in, you can't, Joe Biden can't even order something at a Wawa. Nothing. And by the way, speaking of Israel and uh, whatever, his Middle East uh, uh, plans, his Middle East strategy is completely and totally incoherent. Do you hear what I'm saying? Good. So, Beastie Blast, thank you, Madam Stamp, thank you on this beauteous, Gorgeous Friday uh, day. Uh, let me also tell you, dear friends, remind you that Mrs. L, my beloved, the woman who gives me life, the woman who saved my life, the woman who was the greatest thing that ever happened to me ever. This is her YouTube channel. It means everything, everything to me for you to go and to sign up and to subscribe to her. And to follow her on Twitter at Lynn's Warriors underscore Warriors. That is so important and incredible, incredibly important. And also, don't forget, my friends, if you would also behoove me to sign up to my Lionel Legal page as well. All right. Okay, good. Thank you. Have a great, a glorious, a beauteous, and a wonderful day, a safe day, a safe day. Enjoy the weather. Enjoy the time. Spring is upon us, ladies and gentlemen of the jury. Spring is, I think, upon us. So anyway, have a great day. See you tonight. Don't forget to sign up. Lionel Nation. Make sure you subscribe. I got a bunch of videos coming up. And also, if you're a member, you get the videos first before everybody else does. Until then, my friends, remember these words, this valedictory, this sayonara, this adios, the monkey's dead, the show's over, sue you. Dad, dad.